you start? I want to thank uh, Eileen and uh, Alice for the invitation to come in. I think it's quite important, uh, the whole activity. I, I think it's great that there are this many people here. I think it's just uh, emblematic of the level of energy and underlying support for being able to do something in terms of creating a, a cloud environment that has an evolutionary path and a, and a kind of a, an infrastructure, an OS to support uh, growth because there's so much uh, excitement about it uh, across the development community and across the, the vendor space and the user environment. There's pent up demand. And so uh, we've been uh, very interested as a kind of an open source steward of, uh, of freedom of action, freedom to operate and choice in the community uh, to see that this uh, is nurtured and grows and uh, from our earliest conversations with Alice in Texas and uh, with council, with Dan and uh, others, uh, kind of seeing how this has germinated and, and kind of hearing the story just retold about the evolution. And, uh, uh, I think it's a very important time. And it's also important to make sure that as we're doing all the block and tackling, as you're developing and evolving this community uh, and this platform, that it's one that's sustainable, that the roots are planted deep on, and it's able to sustain when it, when it experiences heavy seas. And I think the mobile space right now in Linux is uh, an Android and, and ties in behind it and, uh, and other platforms essentially is, is undergoing some, uh, some uh, experiential turbulence created by success. So it's a good thing. Success begets attention, lots of attention, it's negative. Um, but in, in the end, it ultimately normalizes when you, you know, bring a lot of good people around the situation and uh, patent issues are potentially a source of derailment of progress. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about is things that could be considered, uh, give a little bit of a sense of history of OIN and how its model evolved as one potential model, but there are a variety of permutations that could be adopted uh, and there are things to consider, but very much it's about uh, creating, understanding the context and creating the right community uh, and leveraging the community because uh, in walking through this, I'll talk a little bit about the kind of the environment and, and how the context is one that's uh, not fraught with peril, but uh, there are risks. I think the question was raised uh, by the person who was sitting here in the prior session about risk and what risks were involved in, in kind of setting up the entity. Uh, I think there are far more risks in implementation and the variety of strategies that ultimately be adopted. Um, and so uh, if you think about the context, you look just at the OpenStack uh, uh, OS, you look at some of the technology areas, networking, uh, storage, computing, these are areas that are replete with massive numbers of patents. There are tens of thousands of patents that impact this, these technology spaces and as a result impact the potential uh, for the advancement. Um, since uh, I just spent a lot of time in Britain and this is all over the place, um, Skyfall's just coming out and it's kind of its own franchise. Um, but uh, unlike this environment where uh, of the 20 plus films that, uh, that have come out of Ian Fleming's books, there you have this one nameless agent of uncertain destiny that, uh, that deals with the specter of, of risk, the specter of threat uh, that's out there. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can adopt or emulate in this community. We have a great resource in being able to have thousands of, of, of agents, thousands of smart people that we can tap into to create a kind of a parallel universe uh, with what we, uh, what we have in the development universe on the legal front. And I think that's, that's kind of what you saw in the history that was just described uh, by Eileen and, uh, and Alice. And that's really what we need to continue. We, it's not an episodic thing, it's a, it's a generative process that we must develop. If we think about the, the as I said, the, uh, the, if you move into certain spaces where people have vested interests and are not necessarily supportive of, of open source models, you create the opportunity for conflict to occur and you create the opportunity for patents to be a source of, of, of how that conflict plays out. And so certainly we have the example that, that everyone sees of, of Microsoft, Apple uh, in particular that are involved in litigation. Uh, it's less of a value judgment on what's happening there and just a statement of the fact that, again, success begets attention, lots of it's negative. Uh, 
we can't also forget that uh, there are all kinds of, of new business models being developed by private equity and hedge funds looking to, to be able to drive return that are funding uh, players that are listed at the bottom uh, in some or, or in small measure or, or in whole to be able to look at value extraction from patents. We have a situation where we, uh, we have all these patents and we can debate whether software patents should or shouldn't exist, whether they should have a five-year life rather than a 20-year life, and, and there are all kinds of things that can be done legislatively potentially uh, to change the regulatory environment. That's a long slog. Anybody who participated in the American Vents Act knows that that, that was kind of a seven-year haul with lots of fits and starts, lots of several administrations that it went through. Finally got something done, but when you get legislative uh, uh, relief, if you will, it's usually a compromise because you've got so many vested interests that are actually competing to have, to have their interests represented in a piece of legislation. What you end up having to have happen then is that the community has to meet whatever legislative reform is halfway. The community has to act as if nothing's going to happen. Uh, we're not going to have the judiciary or the ITC reformed. We're not going to have uh, new legislation that, that helps in, in healing the, the wound created by the massive patenting and, and patent approvals that we've had over the last 20 years. So the fact is we've got a situation where we've got lots of patents that probably should have never been granted that are being purchased by companies for the sole and exclusive purpose of asserting and litigating. And we have record numbers, billions of dollars just in the last five years have gone into supporting these kinds of initiatives. And I've just been in touch with insurance companies that are actually involved in, in providing risk coverage in the event that a troll, in, in troll, an operating company wants to sue and it, it, could, it could be counterclaimed against. Uh, in this case, they're, they're providing coverage to be able to make it easier for small operating companies to actually sue. So it won't just be the, the companies that are non-practicing entities. It'll actually be, we'll start to see a plethora of growth in this space where small to medium-sized companies are actually utilizing it as a strategy. And so that just means that the, the indirect or incidental threats to this platform and, and uh, across open source will become more plentiful. The social phenomenon that, that is the modality, that supports this modality for innovation that, that, that uh, OpenStack takes advantage of is very threatening. I think people don't really understand how powerful it is, but they know that it's powerful enough for them to be concerned. And so because it creates this opportunity for unrivaled levels of new novelty to be created and innovation to occur, people who have siloed organizations and don't, don't allow for collaborative development are at a disadvantage. They implicitly understand they're at a disadvantage. And so you start to see the, the threat, the, that threat actually affecting uh, individuals that, that are operating companies that become direct antagonists of potentially of, this, of, of OpenStack, as well as the indirect antagonists that come from primarily from the financial services world or are backed by financial services or insurance companies. Um, I think it's important that, uh, that the opportunities for collaboration that we've witnessed to create the entity and to grow the platform to where it is, that that collaboration actually become more acute, that it be maintained. And it's not just those, those parties who are actually gold members or platinum members, but it's really all participants. This is something that, that has to create the kind of community uh, energy that we see outside these doors. Uh, and we have to create also a disincentive for aggression uh, by, uh, uh, by players. And unity will help that because if you don't get picked off, uh, there was actually a very vivid uh, YouTube, uh, I, didn't, uh, I spared you by not bringing it, but uh, um, there was, a, I think, an impala that was attacked by a lion on uh, YouTube a couple of weeks ago, which was a, a rather uh, uh, vivid reminder to me of exactly how patent aggressors work. They, they take the, the, the animal that strays from the herd uh, and they pounce on it and, uh, and uh, there is no more uh, opportunity for that, a that animal to have freedom, freedom of choice, freedom to live really and, and be a vibrant player in, a, in, an, in an ecosystem. And I think we need to focus on that. Uh, so really what we've tried to do and I think what, what 
there's, there are direct parallels for, for OpenStack is that what we've tried to do is recognize that we've got this wonderfully elegant, self-organizing, self-regulating community that is the open source environment. And then you've got a Linux, which is an extremely large and successful commercial project that's become a platform within the, uh, within the open source modality or environment. And you've got that, uh, that technology collaboration, which is vibrant and, 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 and very dynamic. And then what we're trying to do is create a parallel environment where people are committed to patent non-aggression as deeply as they're committed to, to, to collaboration on technology. Uh, because we recognize that, that that's the only way for, for choice to be preserved and for technology development to advance. And so what OIN does, it, OIN's model is essentially, uh, we have no financial model, we have no business model, which I think is very important in the open source world because it's a, uh, as I describe it to people, it's an extremely diverse community. And if we actually made money, if we had a revenue model, we'd come under a lot of scrutiny um, because there's a fair amount of paranoia, which is probably appropriate for the early days of, of growing kind of, of Linux and growing open source models. And so as a result, what, what, we've, what we do is essentially acquire patents with money that's been contributed by uh, a half dozen companies that were extremely forward looking seven or eight years ago when they formed OIN and said, if we don't do something, then, then we're gonna have the, the potential for litigation like SCO, which was a litigation funded, a small company's litigation against uh, a series of companies in, uh, in the open source world, the Linux world, uh, as it pertained to, uh, uh, to um, Unix uh, technology and Unix uh, patents. And uh, that, f that litigation was funded by Microsoft, as it turned out. And that kind of activity is something that was a wake-up call for IBM, Red Hat, Novell, Sony, NEC, and Philips, who got together to say, we have to step up and put our, make our commitment. Because if we don't commit to, to this right now, we may not have a market in which we can compete and we're all relying on this market. And I think that's the kind of forward looking view that, that was necessary at the time. And, and because of that, that action, I think it's gonna be a lot easier for whatever policy OpenStack develops for you to be able to rally support because we've got a more contentious environment. What they saw in the early part of the last decade is actually uh, played out uh, in spades where we have uh, more litigation than could have ever been anticipated, both from trolls and from operating companies. Uh, and as you see, anytime you, you're in an area which is, uh, which is the province of other companies or is going to potentially damage their ability to compete as effectively as they, they may have previously, uh, that's going to change a lot of perceptions. It's going to create opportunities for conflagration and, and, and patent aggression. And so what we do is acquire patents. We, we, right now, we acquire patents that support OpenStack uh, because we acquire virtualization patents. Uh, we, we've looked at kind of the whole notion of the cloud and uh, from our inception as being something that was coming and something that was important. So we go out and buy virtualization patents. We bought uh, a virtualization company uh, two years ago. We, we just bought the assets of a virtualization company called Vibrato about four months ago. Uh, that was moving in a different direction. We bought their intellectual property assets. Uh, we've worked with a company that, uh, that Red Hat purchased the assets of, uh, and we've been continuing to work with some of the inventors uh, to have them continue to invent ahead of where, of where we think uh, the, the roadmap is for, uh, for Linux in, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the virtualization and cloud environment. And so we're already looking at the scope of what we buy. It's really across technologies in any place where we think Linux and open source is going to be potentially impacted. So we're already doing things that are compatible and consistent with supporting the mission here. I think it's just a question of, of understanding what we do, developing your own path that really is customized to be able to fit the, the ambitions, the, the desires, goals of the, of the, the foundation and, and more importantly of the community that builds around the OpenStack platform. And so we have patents in biometrics, fundamental patents in PHP, e-commerce. Those are just a sample of some of the areas we purchase. We make the patents available on a royalty-free basis. Anybody who wants a license can have a license. Uh, in fact, it's an open offer. We don't make choices about who can have a license. It could be a company that, that might be, you know, the 
Commerce Department might not li like a lot or, or the D Justice Department doesn't like. We want inclusivity. We don't want to make, dis make choices about who can have a license and who can have access. The main thing is that what we want is to neutralize the patent threat environment by having people agree in return for this license, this royalty-free, fully paid-up license. They agree that they will not sue based on Linux. Uh, and we defined what Linux is, and it expands over time, and we just expanded it twice in the last uh, nine months. Um, and then we also require that they provide a cross-license to patents that they own that read on the Linux system definition, again, as we define it. We take lots of inputs from the community to help in fleshing out what that definition of Linux, Linux is. But essentially, what we're doing is providing these licenses. We're also patenting and making our patents available through the license. We're doing defensive publications, which are statements of prior art that we think the community, if the community, the Linux community, for the last 20 years had been, or 21 years in its history, had actually been producing defensive publications, we'd have far fewer patents because we help raise the bar on quality of what is patentable by having this significant repository of, of these statements of prior art, these publications. Yeah. That's the problem, is we've created a wonderful, you know, a wonderful asset, asset group. The problem is it's not searchable and, and with the t tools and talents that exist in the, in the trade patent and trademark office right now. But unfortunately, in, in, in the double E world, you've got the sanctity of the engineering notebook and you have everything that someone thinks is typically there in the, the kind of the, the IT world, the computer science world, if it's not in code, it doesn't exist. So we've got the challenge of being able to create ways, whether it's through SPDX or through other, other programs that are out there, to be able to create a codification of future, of what we're inventing out into the future so that it can be used for prior art, so we won't run into the situation where we've had precious little invention. Think about the first 15 years of Linux, most of the developers were outside of large companies. The last five years, most of the developers are inside large companies. Um, so we have more codification processes, but before that it was, it, there, there was precious little that ever got uh, codified. And not that it had to be codified in the form of patents. We're, we, we're, we don't have a viewpoint on whether you should patent or whether you should not patent. We recognize that companies like Red Hat, make, for instance, had to make a decision you know, a dozen years ago, 10 years ago, whether they were gonna be a patent holder, whether they were gonna not hold patents, and, you know, I think companies, the young companies go through this all the time, and I think they made a good decision, which is to recognize that you have to be prepared for counteroffensive measures, so you have to own patents, but at the meantime, you don't use your patents against anybody to restrict, to provide a negative right. You make your patents readily available to whomever wants access to them. And so it's a good compromise position, and one that probably 10 years ago, when they first started patenting, eight years ago, whatever it was, uh, filing patents, I think there was probably more criticism than because there was a lack of awareness of the, the simplistic elegance of, of having that kind of strategy. Yeah, which, yeah, can be, a, can be an issue unless you've already licensed OIN, which means that those patents are neutralized in term, because they're forever neutralized because the rights that we convey are in perpetuity. So that's an important component of it. And so we've also developed ways of dealing with the past and the present and the future. The future I've already described. If we get people to file defensive publications, we'll pay for them. Uh, we're, we have an open offer that if more people want to file defensive publications, we'll support the drafting, the creation, the, the, the codification, and the, and the maintenance on sites that are on the Patent and Trademark Office website uh, or database site. Uh, and then. Uh, what we're also doing is, is we've taken a page out of Peer to Patent, and actually the former director of Peer to Patent now works for me because the American Vents Act kind of absorbed Peer to Patent into it, which is essentially if you have a published application and you think it's, th there are a couple right now that are just whoppers that, uh, that are extremely broad applications that have been put out there by known uh, Linux antagonists that are hoping that they slide through, that we are trying to organize um, uh, Utilizing the new the new opportunities within the uh, with the American Vents Act to actually have uh, prior art identified so that we can get them either the claim scope reduced or better yet get the, the whole patent application rejected. Uh, but 
companies are relentlessly pursuing these strategies of, of filing very broad patents, so they get coverage that allows them to then use it as use those those granted patents when they do issue as a stick to be able to create conforming behavior, discourage innovation, and and rob people of rob companies and vendors and, and users of choice. And so uh, we s we're ch we're actively involved in in identifying prior art on published applications or concerning, and then utilizing whatever methods exist within the American Vents Act to be able to post challenge during the our synthetic version of an opposition period, which we have in the U.S. now, which is similar to what, what existed in Europe for some time. Post-issue period of patent is when there are patents that have already been granted. Uh, we're starting a program where we're actually looking at filing more uh, re-examinations to get patents reject to get patents uh, uh, invalidated that have already been granted. Because there are a lot of, of time bombs out there that exist in the in the in the fabric of the environment. I think these are all things that that just again none of these things am I proposing that that the OpenStack the foundation should promote or they're things that can be done um, that we're doing that we think are important because we try to think of what are what are all the potential pitfalls uh, of the patent system or of patents that are out there that can can slow or stall the progress of Linux and open source. And then, uh, as I said, defensive publications we think are important. We license someone about every three days uh, over the last two and a half years. And so uh, there's a groundswell of support. We have over 500 licensees. We own over 400 patents and applications, North American patent and U.S. patents and applications, over 600 global patents and applications. We have 250 defensive publications we produce. We'd like that to be 2,500. Uh, we're promoting that and trying to get people uh, more engaged in that process. And of the, the companies that are licensees, there are over 300,000 patents that they own, some percentage of which are part of the cross-license that we're, we, we make available. Bless you. Uh, and uh, we've expanded the definition, as, I said, as I've said. We originally were looking at where Linux was at the time that OAN was formed, which is back office transaction processing under the server space. We've migrated in a very aggressive way to provide coverage of, uh, of relevant platforms right now in, uh, in the mobile space. We'll continue to expand to cover the mobile space. We're also looking at the home. Uh, we're looking at virtualization. We're looking at the cloud. We're looking at, uh, at, uh, at the automobile. We think these are all areas that we should be expand. As Linux expands, we want to expand the definition so the coverage and the neutralization uh, in terms of, of member member acceptance of, of kind of the notion of a patent no-fly zone in those areas becomes more prevalent. So some ideas that I had about uh, some of the things that we do, some of the things that you see in the in in other pools, I mean, clearly OIN is not the only defensive pool out there. There's RPX, AST. Some people believe that Intellectual Ventures is a defensive pool as well. Um, for some, maybe it is. Um, and so they're all manner of, of defensive vehicles that people have signed on to and paid a lot of money into. Uh, and uh, we're really of the mind that the amount of money that's been, many of our members are members of, of RPX and also of AST, and, and so there's a lot of, of complementarity. I think whatever is crafted here should be complementary as well. You should look to leverage every dollar that's been spent in forming these other entities uh, and not think that you have to kind of reinvent, reinvent the wheel. Um, and you know, you could, you could adopt a view that there is no formal action that you take, that you just say, look, this is not something that, that we think the foundation has a, a play in. We recognize it's an issue, but each individual company really has to take care of itself. Some companies may have relationships with OIN, and maybe that's going to help them uh, to some extent, maybe to a great extent. It just depends. Um, so I think that's, that's not an, a, a, an option that lacks viability. It should be considered because it, it Again, you have to determine, and the, the board has to determine what it really wants uh, in terms of its role and, and to play back what its members want um, and to recognize that there are other entities out there that may be beneficial. Um, 
there may be an opportunity just to do a patent cross license or a covenant not to sue among members. Um, there could be contributed patents. There could be no contributed patents. Um, it, you know, there, you could create a pool. Um, you, again, you have decisions around whether if you contribute patents into a pool and create almost like a, like a standards pool, like MPEG LA or something, determine whether the, it's a fee-based thing where people have to uh, gain access to it, they have to take pay a certain fee. Um, I, I don't know what you know where the, where your conversations will go internally at the board level and with the community, um, uh, and the ecosystem. But essentially, these are the kinds of things that need to be considered. Whether it's member-only access, whether it's open to non-members, uh, how open um, the the choices around assets that are put into a pool. Um, a cloud defense patent fund, you could develop a standalone fund, raise capital the way OIN did, develop a series of regulations or, or guidelines and uh, policies around how the patents are, will be used, could be, could be quite similar to what OIN is doing, could be different. Uh, I think it's, it's really just important to kind of consider all the options, not discount any of them, uh, and then look at you know, whether you're going to have member contribution, whether you're going to invest in an entity like an RPX or an OIN to be able to utilize the fact that it has sourcing and, and evaluation and, and negotiation and acquisition and maintenance skills. And so you don't necessarily have to do that again, or you may want to have control over that because you want to make sure that there's a fine focus on, on the areas that are critical to, to OpenStack. Um, and so, you know, whether it's a discrete pool, whether it's a commingled pool, um, whether it's a pledge model, right now we're looking at, at expanding our capability of doing larger deals by evaluating the notion of a pledge model where we would have a series of companies, members and, and licensees uh, that would potentially pledge a certain amount of money and then this is how a lot of funds actually are done in, in, in uh, Wall Street where you pledge a certain amount of money so you're pre-committed to, to investments in a certain area. It doesn't mean you actually are giving your approval to the fund manager, but there's a pre-commitment so that when you do when you do move forward, you're already well advanced, and it can be done quite efficiently. There are just a number of ways of doing this, and understanding how funds work, and understanding how these defensive pools work, bringing that together with with again the requirements and the objectives of of the members that are really guiding and stewarding OpenStack, I think is critical. Um, but making sure that that conversation is had because it's a very important one to ensure that there, there is some policy, that it's an explicit policy, and that you evidence thought leadership to, the, to, to everyone out there so that they know that this is something that's being thought of, being addressed, uh, and, and what the limits of that, uh, of that the, the, the ultimate strategy that's adopted are. Um, so I think the, the consideration should be careful. Uh, it should be thoughtful. Think about, again, mem rem uh, member goals, uh, remembering that this is not something that should be done in isolation. I, I can't emphasize enough that, that every one of these defensive pools, OIN in particular, is, is ready and supportive of devoting resource, uh, uh, lawyer's time, capital to ensure that you get this right. Because one of the things that comes with the benefits of, of, of taking advantage of open collaboration, open source, is that you have all these, this, the value proposition is very different from an innovation standpoint, but there are obligations and responsibilities on the flip side of that. And what we're all in the boat, in, in the, we're all in the same boat because we're all participating in this open source paradigm. And as a result, so goes, you know, in, in, to our view, if, if, if you guys don't, don't kind of get this right so that it works for you and that it works to support kind of a, a rapid advancement of, cl of cloud services and, and cloud solutions, then we all, we're all, we're all uh, essentially lesser for it. So we want to make sure that we can contribute whatever you need to be able to ensure that you can I implement a strategy that's going to work to be able to support uh, OpenStack. Um, and again, don't reinvent the wheel focused on efficiency and efficacy. I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of models out there that you can take parts of, you can, you can uh, take 
all of. You can essentially invest in an entity to be able to have it, in, it acquire for you. But essentially, just thinking through what you need, what you need to do, and what your members' goals are, and what their goals are for the community, and then allowing the rest of the this community of, of players in open source to be able to help. Uh, and again, there isn't. We can't afford to allow to be negligent in allowing you to to not have access to to all the, the institutionalized learnings that we've gone through. Um, and uh, we think it's very important that there are a number of my members that are in the room now that are that uh, are fully supportive of this notion. They're deeply committed uh, to uh, to making OpenStack a success, and we want to be a part of that. Uh, and insofar as patent issues have the potential to slow or stall OpenStack's advance, uh, we think it's critical to uh, to have a proactive stance. So thank you very much. Shabbat <laughs> shalom. I think it, you know again if you if you look at this I think this was before you came in Shabbatasam, but no it's all fine it's just that so many things that are bound up in the cloud there are so many patents out there that it's hard to say I think it's it really depends on who's holding the gun it's not it's not the patents themselves that are bad it's the uh, maybe this is a I guess that's all right to say. Um, <coughs> the analogy is maybe not great, but um, so it's really if if somebody's an aggressor, an antagonist, and they're holding the patents and they haven't committed to decommission those patents as it pertains to OpenStack, then then you've got a potential problem. And whether it's a troll uh, that's utilizing them or it's an operating company that's antagonistic because it has its own approach and wants to find those choke points because there are control points in Patents, essentially, it's much like the, the RF patents that Microsoft is attempting to neutralize right now uh, in terms of this, this battle that's going on in the mobile side. Uh, there are critical spaces that are choke points or control points where if you control that area with patents, then you control the ability of, of, of the technology to advance. And so that's what we really have to look for, is to try and anticipate and to try and, it, it's really a process of complex adaptation. This is like living systems theory. You know, you, if you want to survive, you've got to anticipate and adapt. And you have to adapt, and if you adapt, if you've got all these you know, tens of thousands of companies out there, people sensing and, and advising you this may be a problem, it's so much better than if you feel you're isolated and alone in this. You know, there's no one company that, that should feel, because there are companies in, in OpenStack that have dozens of patents and there are patent companies that have tens of thousands of patents. I think the, the key is to collectivize so that there isn't the feeling of isolation, that, that, one, that one impala can be separated out from the herd and have and essentially be turned and lose choice. And essentially, because we can't afford to, we're only as strong as the weakest link. I think the way there are our approach is we're focused on, on getting really small companies because they're the most vulnerable. They're the ones who can be preyed upon and can be turned away from utilizing, utilizing Linux, utilizing open source. And so we're trying to focus on those, those companies that are small to medium-sized enterprise, the top 100 distributions. We know what the top five are. It's the others that we're really concerned about because we don't want to see the, the energy and the creativity of any, of any ecosystem comes from the edges. We have to make sure that the edges are vital, that there's blood flowing through them. And that's why we need to work together. And rather than, than feel like we're, we, you know, this group's working on this, this group's working on that, this is something that's too important not to, not to collaborate and collectivize. Yes? Focused on uh, is ITC reform. So 
without giving you kind of a chapter and verse on the ITC, the ITC is a trade court that's being perverted by trolls and by operating companies seeking to use it to create a, uh, an uneconomic licensing environment because the only relief that you get in, in that court, the only remedy that that court has to issue is an is a injunction. So it, it, when faced with the prospect of being shut out of the U.S. market, you will sign a higher than market license. And when you have deep pocketed companies that are operating companies that are antagonistic to Linux that will file multiple lawsuits in that venue when it costs you eight and a half to twelve million dollars to defend there, that's an environment where we're seeing total cost of ownership rise. This is not this is not a situation we want to see repeated for for cloud and for OpenStack, believe me. Um, this is they're, they're, so what we're doing is investing, and we have been over the last fifteen months in in changing the public interest test so that the, the, the entity has the ability to reform itself without legislative reform. There are also measures with, that we support that are legislative based to be able to re raise the standing bar uh, for the ITC. So there's a lot that's been written on this. There'll be a lot more written. Uh, there are many forums that are going on. It's the next wave of, of major reform in, uh, in US patent law. So that's where we feel we can make a difference is denying access to the ITC and to that ultimate injunction, injunctive relief when, when the suit should really be tried in the district court where reasonable damages could be uh, a dollar. Yes? It was just at a, a forum in uh, uh, Brussels, focused on in some way, on, in some respect on this issue. I think the, first off, the initial statement, in Germany you're not safe from, uh, from software patents. Uh, and there are thousands of software patents that have been issued uh, in Europe. You just don't, they don't, I mean even in Britain where they have a, a very, uh, antagonistic, openly antagonistic view, there are lots of software patents. It's just you don't have litigation in the way we do in the U.S. Well, you have it in Germany. Yeah, no, I understand that the unit, yeah. The unitary process, you're, you're exactly right, it will provide a uh, essentially a way of subverting what are the, the general principles of an anti-software patent culture. So that's true, so that's something that needs to be followed. We're, uh, we tend, again, the software patent issue, we have people in Brussels that work for us as well. Um, we kind of stay around the hoop on those issues, but that's, uh, it's mainly the ITC where we felt we could have a, um, a surgical uh, response to a problem and have an impact uh, and we are moving that in that direction so that by the end of the year, I think there will be some changes in the way that the, the open source and, and Linux-based products in particular will be considered to be part of the public interest so that they won't issue injunctions against them, which is a major move forward for us. Yes? I think that's TBD uh, to be determined. I, I don't, you know, I, th I think you have to think that what we heard just before is, is an incredibly accelerated pace to get to the formation and to where the foundation is now. So I think this is something that will follow, but, you know, Alice and, and Eileen can probably answer that question better than I can.
we've been having conversations, so we know that it's there's a sensitivity and awareness, and there has been for uh, for really several years. I, so I think it's it's not that there's not sensitization; it's just developing a policy is is tricky, and you really want to do it right, and you want to take a lot of inputs, and that requires a lot of sessions like this, and a lot of a lot of sessions where individual entities are coming in and providing a, a view into their model and what works in their model, what doesn't work, what they would change. Because nobody gets it exactly right. Every model you have to kind of adapt to fit circumstances and the circumstances are always changing. The threat landscape's changing. Who you thought were, when you set up something, who you thought may have been an aggressor now maybe is an ally and there are new aggressors that emerge because as markets shift, again, you, you invade the space of, of alternative players who, who rise up with their patents to be able to try and slow or stall your progress. So I think it's all been thought of uh, in depth, but it hasn't been articulated into a policy yet. And that's, again, why I'm very anxious to participate and be here. Um, I just came from Europe because I feel this is very important, and, and I've just uh, been excited about what's going on with OpenStack and foundations formation and uh, whatever, I would be remiss if I didn't put every resource we have to, to ensure that we are coherent, that our policies are ultimately coherent, whatever is adopted. And how intimately we work together, that remains to be seen. Thank you very much for your uh, time.